Today we'll be taking a look at the Crow Pi L, a laptop for your Raspberry Pi 4. The Crow Pi L features an internal 5000 mAh battery, integrated webcam, trackpad, mic, and a 720p display. It also has a cool feature that will allow swapping between two microSD cards very easily. The Crow Pi L includes a number of programming courses, and with the Crow Tail Kit, you can create some impressive electronics projects. I'm John, and welcome to Wagner's Tech Talk. Here we have the Crow Pi L, a real Raspberry Pi laptop. This unit was shipped to me by Elecro for the purpose of review. One thing I like to do in videos like this is show you what's in the box and how to put it together. If you aren't interested in watching that, I do have chapter markers below so you could easily jump to any location in the video. Taking a look here, we've got the manual, which is fairly well done. And uh, let's see what's over on the right hand side. Looks like we have a mouse with a small dongle for the wireless connection. So if you plan to use this, it will consume one USB port. And we have, uh, looks like some standoffs and screws and a small flat cable and a 32 gigabyte micro SD card with an OS installed that was prepared by Elecro. I often prefer to make a backup of the micro SD card for important equipment. Should I mess it up during my tinkering and testing, I can always revert back. If you want to do the same, visit wagnerstechtalk.com forward slash comment for some instructions on how to make a backup image, restore it, and resize the card if you plan to transfer it to a larger capacity card. Looking back to the box, in this package we have the GPIO adapter board, the TF card adapter board, HDMI, and USB expansion boards. We'll take a closer look at each of these in a moment. Under the cardboard packaging, you'll find the USB-C power supply with a 12-volt, 2-amp output. To fully assemble this laptop, you will need one additional component, a Raspberry Pi 4 Model B. It cannot be used with any other model Raspberry Pi, and at the time of this video, Raspberry Pis are a bit hard to find. Let's get the Crow Pi L out of the packaging and prep the Pi 4. We'll take a closer look at the Crow Pi L once it's all put together. There is a pretty cool magnetic cover which provides easy access to the location where we'll be installing the Pi 4. We'll first install these standoffs and screws. There are actually four holes on each side of the Pi. Just slide the screw through the bottom and then the standoff on the populated area of the board. One thing that caught me kind of off guard is that the screws actually keep spinning at a certain point. When that happens, just move on to the next one until all four have been fully installed. Now we need to install the adapters and expansion boards. Let's take a look at each very quickly before we do. This is the GPIO expansion board with an integrated fan. We'll take a closer look here. There's the fan and the connector going to the PCB. Pretty cool. This is the HDMI expansion board. It has two micro HDMI connectors and a USB-C connector. And a rather unique TF adapter, which allows you to have two different micro SD cards installed and simply flip the switch to toggle between the two. Of course, do that once the Pi 4 is shut down. And lastly, this is the USB expansion board. It simply plugs into the USB port and we'll connect a small flat cable from there to the HDMI expansion. Now let's move on to the assembly. Take the TF card adapter and install it such that the AB switch is visible from the populated side of the Raspberry Pi 4. We'll now take the HDMI expansion board, align the connectors, and insert it into the Pi 4. I almost didn't see the small cable in the package, but we'll use it to connect the HDMI expansion board to the USB board. Gently pull out the small tab on the connector, slide in the cable such that the blue ribbon is facing up, then push in on the black part of the connector to lock it into place. Repeat the same for the connector on the USB expansion board, and then plug it into the top left USB port. Next, we'll take the assembly and slide it into the cutouts for the ports on the Crow Pi L case. It's held in place with magnets from the standoffs, so there are no screws to install. 
We'll now take the GPIO expansion board and position it across the GPIO pins on the Pi 4 and the pins within the laptop. Firmly press down on the board to make sure all the pins are properly seated. We can now insert the Crow Pi L 32GB micro SD into the slot. Your manual may or may not explain this next step, but gently flip the black latch on the connector up, insert the flat cable on one side, and repeat the same for the other. Now we simply position the cover and the magnets hold it into place. Now that it's fully assembled, let's take a brief tour of the Crow Pi L. On the left side, you have access to the Ethernet port, two USB 3.0 ports, and one USB 2.0 port. On the back, there are stereo speakers and some extra ventilation. Access to the Pi 4 is a breeze with the magnetic panel. Ventilation for the fan is part of the back cover, and there are rubber feet to keep it from sliding across your desk. On the right side, we have the GPIO connector, the AV output, HDMI output to an external monitor, which is nice to have, and your USB-C power input. Opening the Crow Pi L reveals the keyboard, which is decent, but unfortunately missing some keys that I often use while coding, such as the home and end keys. At the top is the power button, a trackpad, a GPIO reference chart, and this chart doesn't light up when the pins are in use, however. Typing on the keyboard is nice. It has a good feel to it. There is a webcam and microphone should you need that. For the optical mouse, you will need a single AA battery. Now let's power on the Crow Pi L and check out the intro. I am booting from the included micro SD card. And while it's booting, Specbot, do you mind letting our viewers know about the specs of the Crow Pi L? Sure, John. I'd be happy to. 11.6 inch 1366 by 768 display, external HDMI connector, built in 5000 milliamp hours battery, integrated camera mic, switchable micro SD adapter, 40 pin GPIO connector, built in fan, 96 programming courses. Back to you, John. Thank you, Specbot. Now, let's discuss the software. We'll start this segment with a look at the software included with the Crow Pi L. I'll connect this HDMI cable so I can capture the video and make it easier for you to see. You'll first be greeted with the Pi panel, which is a great introduction to electronics and programming with the Crow Pi L. However, we'll take a look at that closer in the Crow Tail segment. For now, I'll minimize it and we'll check out the other included applications. Under programming, you'll find three different IDEs or integrated development environments. The Arduino IDE will allow you to program this very useful and popular microcontroller. Genie is a fast and lightweight IDE which supports many different file types as well as code completion. And as you would expect, under Internet you'll find the Chromium web browser for navigating to your favorite websites such as this one. You'll also find VLC is pre-installed for video playback, a few typical accessories, and applications for adjusting your preferences. As you may already know, you can run a number of different operating systems on the Raspberry Pi, and it's not at all limited to the micro SD that was provided by Elicro. For example, I'll use this 512GB micro SD and format it as FAT32, and install a number of operating systems to it using a tool called Pinlight. I already have a detailed video on how to set up Pinlight, and I'll place a link up above if you're interested. You may recall that the Crow Pi L has a dual micro SD slot. In this case, I moved the Elicro micro SD to the bottom micro SD slot and the new micro SD with several OS's installed to the side that has the AB switch. This makes swapping between the two very convenient. Pinlight provides a nice boot selection UI which allows you to easily boot into the operating system you're interested in. My favorite OS to use on the Raspberry Pi is Twister OS. Aside from having preloaded a large number of useful applications, you can also easily switch the themes. For instance, if you'd like the UI to look like Windows XP, well, there you go. All of the applications run identically regardless of the theme. It's only the UI that changes. Another one that you may find interesting is Twister 11, which, you guessed it, looks similar to Windows 11. And if you're a Mac user, you'll feel right at home with the Twister Sir Lite theme, that looks quite similar to the Mac UI. 
While we're in Twister OS, let's try out a few of the included features. While I personally rarely use trackpads, the one integrated in the CrowPi L was particularly difficult to use. The layout of the trackpad is in the upper right of the keyboard and is a bit small. It required two hands to resize and move windows around. If you prefer a mouse, this is a non-issue, and the trackpad does work in a pinch. The integrated camera is okay, but again, not great. It operates at 640 by 480 resolution, and I was only getting about 13 frames per second. You can also use your Crowpi L for retro gaming. Here I've installed Recall Box, and I'll play a few of the games included with the distribution. I did have a clone Xbox 360 controller plugged in to play these games. Without a doubt, the most commonly used operating system for the Raspberry Pi is called Pi OS. You can easily set it up in a dual monitor configuration, as you see here. But now let's explore the exciting world of using our Crow Pi L for custom electronics and programming using the Crow Tail accessory. For electronics learning and experimentation, you're going to need two components in addition to what you've already seen. The first is the Crow Pi L base shield. The assembly process is very easy. Simply remove the protective cover to the acrylic panels. Insert the screws and plastic standoffs. Position the PCB and insert the plastic screws into the standoffs. Place the top acrylic panel over the board and install the four screws. Now install the 40 pin GPIO connector into the base shield. It's not keyed, so be sure the red wire is going to pin 1 as shown here. Insert the opposite end of the cable into the Crowpi L. Again, note the position of the red pin 1 wire on the left. The second component you'll need for the electronics experiments is the Crowtail starter kit for the Raspberry Pi. This kit includes a number of the sensors and components needed to follow along with the courses. The kit makes it very easy to get started learning to program the sensors without the need for a soldering iron. The Crowtail kit is essentially an easy to use breadboard solution. I do need to make you aware of one thing that I almost missed and that is under the module tray is a very nice user's guide. This user's guide includes a link to the Python code examples on GitHub and an overall great introduction to the included modules. There is a bundle of wires with connectors already applied, which make it very easy to snap the modules to the base shield. It's actually much easier to use than a standard breadboard. There are two primary lessons you can follow. The Let's Code lessons utilize a drag and drop development environment, or the Python lessons if you prefer. At the bottom, you'll find groups for related applications, and the forums group has some helpful links for additional research and assistance. The Let's Code lessons cover not only hardware control, but also examples on creating games. But under the hardware control, there are 20 lessons which will step you through from beginning to end, what modules you'll need, how they should be connected, and guide you through the entire process very clearly. Under the Python lessons, you'll find the equivalent courses using the Python programming language, so you have the option to code in a manner that best suits your experience. If you're new to this stuff, Let's Code is a great way to dive in and start having fun. When you enter the Let's Code lessons, a presentation will appear, as well as the IDE on the left-hand side. This makes it easy to switch between the two, and the lessons walk you through each individual coding step and provide some helpful tips. But I'm going to go rogue here a bit and demonstrate a simple blinking LED example to show you how easy it is to code even without following a lesson. I'll start by connecting this LED to the D5 or Digital 5 port. Now within the Let's Code IDE, I'll drag the on start object onto our canvas. And next we need to set the pin number 5 as an output for our LED. So I'll drag that on there and position the code so it's a little easier to see. 
And now I'm going to go to the forever block and drop that onto the canvas and it'll of course run forever, everything we put inside. I'll go ahead and set the pin to pin number five and the output as high or on. Now I'll add a wait timer for one second and I'll right click and duplicate that entire section and simply change the output from high to low or off. While creating these blocks, Let's Code was writing our Python program in the upper right. How cool is that? Now let's run it and make sure it works. And looks like it does. There are far more lessons to explore, such as game programming. And this one looks like fun, as it's a cross between Asteroids and Missile Command, as well as some more advanced Python and Let's Code projects. One of the more complex Let's Code tutorials I tried was the Timer Project, or lesson number 22. This one creates a number of smaller code blocks to function as a stopwatch. That is, you press a button to start the timer, the same button to stop the timer, and again to reset it back to zero and continue incrementing the time. This project makes use of an LCD panel. It took a bit of time to step through all the slides and create the code, but using the guide, it was very easy to create. When I connected the LCD panel and ran the code, I could barely read the text. Then I noticed on the back there was a brightness adjustment. Using a small screwdriver, I simply rotated the potentiometer and adjusted the brightness level. If you run into the same, now you know how to adjust it. The timer worked just fine, and it was a great learning experience on how to control an external LCD panel. That brings us to the end of another video. I think Elecro did a great job designing this laptop for the Raspberry Pi 4. I appreciate that it has a built-in battery that states it should last about three hours and is consistent with what I noticed. I also appreciate the integrated keyboard, webcam, and mic. The dual micro SD slot is a very unique and impressive feature which allows you to easily switch between the lessons and your own micro SD card. Using it with pin light makes it even better as you can install a number of different operating systems without having to remove the back cover. Although it's very easy to do should you need to. I should also note that the trackpad is not that great. I don't use them myself so it's not a big deal for me personally, but it may be for you. I hope you found this video helpful and that I've answered most of the questions you may have about the Crow Pi L. If I missed any, please comment below and ask away. If you enjoyed what you saw here, please click the like button. If you didn't, click the dislike, but please leave me a comment and let me know what you didn't like. It will help me improve future videos and all feedback is appreciated. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel and want to see future videos like this, please do. And don't forget to ring the bell notification so you don't miss a future video. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.